Good morning, everybody. I was supposed to be here yesterday, but we had a little mini hurricane in Florida that the forecasters didn't tell us about until Friday night when it actually happened. So yesterday morning at 0600, it was blowing about 50 miles an hour at my house and my garage was flooding. So I made the command decision not to fly yesterday like Brett did um, and get up here first thing this morning. So thank you to Globecom for uh, rearranging my presentation. So 4GN Wired is an RF engineering company based in Melbourne, Florida. We do some work for Globecom and, and we have some clients in common. And our, my presentation today is going to be a little bit about um, network optimization and why maybe that should be part of your business plan. And I have, like Greg Pauly, been doing this since about 1987, but I'm even older than him because I had 10 years of satellite experience before that. So uh, we've been doing this a long time. So license spectrum is the natural resource that has spawned the wireless telecom industry. And as with coal, oil, lumber, water, the supply is finite. And it must be used efficiently in order to, sus to sustain a viable business plan. Um, the companies that harness the spectrum and put it to best use are the result of vision, <coughs> business opportunity, capital purchases, and operational costs. From beginning to never ending. So from the initial design to system launch, the spectrum is used to generate revenues. The efficiency to which spectrum usage produces revenue therefore begins in the design process and is brought to and should remain at peak value through the network life cycle uh, through the process of ongoing program of, of optimization and maintenance. As networks evolve, including technology upgrades, RF planning and optimization remains an ongoing process. And for many of our customers, which have progressed, um, as Greg had said, from AMPS and TDMA to GSM, CDMA, uh, and on to LTE, the spectrum needs to be managed and utilized efficiently during the process of overlaying and or transitioning networks to integrate with existing system handoffs, roaming, billing, et cetera. So I think Greg was talking about one of the uh, Globecom clients, Sheridan Valley, and in, in their case, they had a GSM network, they still have a GSM network, and we made room for them uh, in their spectrum to overlay their new CDMA network. Um, and then they're going to do an LTE network where they're going to hand off and, and talk to Verizon. They had to have the CDMA network to do the fallback plan. So managing all, all of that spectrum to best use and making sure that it operates efficiently is, uh, is good for them and, uh, and good for their clients. But, you know, there networks today, we have IP, we have LTE networks, we have wireless networks, and we certainly have broadband, we have PCS, we have satellite, and we have microwave, and all of those types of networks can be optimized. I put that in there because at the very top of that 30 meter Intelsat antenna, there's two little bodies up there, and one of those is actually mine. That's in Lebanon many, many, many years ago, and, and a broadband micro network in Vegas. So part of the optimization process, certainly on your wireless, is also applicable for satellite networks, for your microwave networks. There are clearly, many of the markets that we go to, they're, they're literally running on three flat tires. Optimizing these networks and having a plan to do that um, will make sense for you. So this is the definition of optimization. An act or process or methodology of making something as a, as a design system or decision as fully perfect or functional or effective as possible. So a well-designed and optimized network represents the most efficient deployment of capital resources. With respect to the cost of equipment and utilities, well-designed and optimized network, and only a well-designed and well-optimized network, uh, will maintain a maximum return on investment. It can also be shown that an optimized network is a contributor towards lower labor and operational costs through reduced troubleshooting and outage times, and furthermore, an optimized network that is producing consistently high revenues has a more value to a potential investor or merger opportunity. Everybody's network is different. Um, in this photograph, we, we put a cruise ship in here because we actually, somehow somebody found tiny 4G and wired and said, could you guys take a look at the in-building network on the oasis of the seas, which is like the world's biggest cruise ship now. And we said, great. You know, that ship's going to dock in, in Fort Lauderdale, right? We're in Melbourne. That's a two-hour drive. They go, now nah, you got to come to Sweden or wherever they built it and do it there. So we sent a guy there to do it, and we, we just couldn't believe we get jobs like that. So it's wonderful. And so, but some of you have rural markets. Some of you have mountainous markets. Some of you have metro markets. And the propagation environment in all of those markets is different. 
And so the wireless network or the, the, the propagation values or morphologies are different. Everybody takes a little bit different type of uh, uh, work to make to optimize their network. So there's some ministry buzz about self-optimizing networks, but the reality is, is that they're still in their infancy. And though there are now switching platforms and software programs that attempt to dynamically adjust a small set of parameters, mobile uplink power, CDI level, stuff like that, to improve specific situations, there are no automated methods uh, to address large scale reductions in system performance that revolt, result from ongoing service and propagation environment, different bands, frequency, weather, seasons inconsistencies in installation over time, different vendors, different practices, changes in traffic events or traffic conditions, uh, population growth or events, ongoing system growth and incorporation of additional network elements and migration to new technologies. All these things affect the operation of the network that you have today. So the bottom line is the collection and analysis of system statistics and empirical drive test data is still the best way to optimize your network in our view. It, re it involves comprehensive network planning and design. Um, and in the preliminary design phase, really no matter what kind of wireless network you have, the process is pretty much the same. It's your business objectives and your marketing plan, demographic studies, network build out plans, site acquisition, build or lease, as Greg was talking about, technology deployment plans. The FCC, FAA regulations and requirements that affect your market, there's there's license build-out requirements. There's demographic pop coverage that you need to maintain. Uh, there's tower requirements. There's NEPA. There's SHPA. There's many things that we have client in Alaska that doesn't think that Alaska is controlled by the FCC. And so they just go ahead and build whatever they want and then call us and ask us to you know, do the paperwork later. And we're like, you guys are going to jail. I mean, you know, that's what's going to happen. So in the final design or the as-built design, um, that's where you actually located the sites. That's, that's what your site date is, what type of antennas you used, uh, how much tilt is on them, how many radios are there, um, data fill, microwave, the fiber network. And these data serve as important building blocks for ongoing optimization and ongoing growth in your network and expansion. And in the optimization process, you have your site shakedown testing to make sure that the Globecom guys hooked it up to the right antennas. We go out there and make sure they do that kind of stuff. Then do the drive and performance monitoring to make sure that that site is covering where it's supposed to cover. So the foundation for a good network, if some of you have 700 megahertz spectrum or you're building a brand new network, this I guess would apply to you, but basically you really need a good nominal design. And a well-designed network will manifest the benefits of optimization more so than a poorly design network. And there's a point where all the optimization in the world is not going to help a poorly designed network from the outset. I mean, that's, that's just the way that is. This is why careful and prudent RF planning and best practices engineering methodology is part of the overall business plan. So optimization on the customer. So for the multiple causes of churn, sometimes customer satisfaction within, with network performance is one that can be traced directly back to hard data. And this is something that a few folks that use Telsa soft data, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And of course, you've got to factor in pricing and customer service in terms of, of customer churn. But it's produced by defined and addressable system parameters. So being able to look at what your call quality is, look at what your drop call statistics are, those, those, those paint a picture of ongoing statistical relevance, customer satisfaction, and cost. So network optimization can therefore directly impact churn. And with a well-tuned network, churn will be reduced, which translates into higher reoccurring revenues and, by definition, reduced cost of customer retention. Optimization and capital expenditures. Um, careful business planning based on historical data coupled with best practices, RF engineering, and ongoing maintenance yields the highest ROI. And so actual coverage equals the maximum obtainable coverage. For you small operators in here, you probably don't know that uh, AT&T and Verizon hire hired contractors and legal experts to do FCC license searches on your license to see if you've done anything incorrectly so that they can claim that CGSA as their own territory. Does anybody in here know that that happens? I don't see really any hands, and, and that's what they do. So if you haven't licensed your CGSA correctly, depending whether you have a cellular or PCS network or even a 700 megahertz network as you're coming up on, 
Uh, there are people out there that can claim some of those areas and increase their, uh, their pop value by claiming some of that territory. Some of you look unbelieving, but I assure you that this happens. So who's here remembers the days when you could put a little cell repeater in and, and put an FCC contour out there, 39 dBU contour, and actually claim some part of your territory because your license was getting to expire? Well, I used to work for Vanguard Cellular, and we did that in a bunch of places <coughs> where you know, it's a rural area and we didn't have the capital investment to put cell sites out there and so we put one of these little repeaters out there and that, that was a legal way to claim the CGSA. Additional optimization parameters. A comprehensive and, and available accounting of deployed network elements, site data, expressions, and maintenance level. I can tell you the number of times we go to a market and ask somebody, okay, great, let me have your site data and they don't have it in one place. You got to go to three different engineers or three different places to get a list of all the coordinates and the antennas and the, who has the frequency plan and that kind of stuff. So maintaining a good database is, is, is a good thing to do. Key performance indicators. Does everybody know what key performance indicators are? I see a couple heads, but let me tell you really what it is. If you go to the doctor and you do a blood test and you have high cholesterol and you have LDL or you have blood pressure, this and that, those are your KPIs. And similarly with the Telsasaw stuff, we can measure the KPIs of your network and the drive test, the call quality or the, the goodness of, the, of that network. And you don't have to take our word for it. It's just a baseline drive. You see it in Google Earth. And then we, we fix the network. We send you the before and the after. So you're going to see some of that on here today. Establish uh, clear identification of performance-related matters that can only be solved through increased capital investment and establish the necessary data to facilitate deployment of new technologies. So how will the new 3 or 4G technology work with your network? RF and network planning, business plans, integration, and implementation. And so your vendor may have little experience integrating your current vendor's technology. And sometimes what happens is you've got a, you've got a Nortel system or you've got a Nokia system or an Ericsson GSM or CDMA or whatever it is, and you decide you're going to buy a Huawei 4G or you're going to buy a Alcatel Lucent UMTS. Well, you have the experts from your 2G system and you have the experts on your 3G network, but they don't necessarily know how to make that handoff work between those markets. So ongoing network optimization program will reduce the cost of customer attention, save you on unnecessary capital expenditures, and streamline the build-up process and migration to new technologies. So optimization as a tool for business planning, and basically this slide shows you that um, commercial wireless network growth planning is not always an exact science. Some might think it is. And ongoing optimization provides both the historical data necessary to guide the decision-making process and the assurance that the decisions are sound. The use of solid data provides a firm foundation for a realistic plan. So while sales projections are somewhat dependent on the economy and the effectiveness of your sales staff, but even if their projections are spot on, the impact on your network is variable. A similar sentiment is relevant with respect to building out your network. Each new subscriber, new cell, introduces some level of change in network performance. Traffic balancing will be required to process the increased loading of the network, and periodic audits allow for a comprehensive system-wide evaluation and calibration of the network. Optimization and the cost of doing business. Well, basically, a well-running and optimized network is the foundation for achieving forecasted capacity. And a poor-running network will increase troubleshooting and staffing expense and reduce time spent on normal maintenance requirements. These top